Welcome everyone to the Tableau Developer User Group. Thank you all for joining and thank you for all the awesome presenters that we have today. Today we are going to focus on Tableau Server Admins and how they use the developer platform to work every day to make their job easier, hopefully. I'm Geraldine, everyone is calling me Gigi, and I'm a developer advocate at Tableau. I'm going to be your host for today. So you are all muted, that's normal. But if you want to ask any questions, please use the Q&A box during the session. We have time at the end of the presentations for some questions. The agenda for today. We have one small step for developer, one giant for leap for the Tableau server administrations. We also have common use cases, uh, common use cases, Tableau server admin use cases for the developer platform and how the REST API helps scaling Tableau to a large enterprise. We have two Mark and one Jonathan today presenting. We are really excited to have them. They are experts in the area. And we are going to start with Mark. Uh, so we were making fun before when we were doing the tech check because I'm really bad at pronouncing last name. So let's try. Turn T. I'm sure he's going to pronounce it better than I do, but I call him Mark K, based in Dublin. So if you don't know, today is St. Patrick's Day. So I think everyone, happy St. Patrick's Day. I think you're going, I hope you're going to get a beer tonight, or if it's already the evening, you might just drink beer now and enjoying the sessions. So now, Mark K, one small step for developer. Can you tell us more? Um, so let me get sharing. So uh, effectively, um, a getting started guide to for a lot of server administrators to get into the developer area, uh, trying to work out how to do some automation. Um, it, many that I speak to end up feeling lost in the options or daunted by the amazing sea of skills that they they um. Uh, feel like they need to to get started. Um, so I wanted to um, set up a way of explaining to people on how they can uh, move forward and making their lives easier. Because uh, I don't know how many of you guys are server administrators, but this is pretty much the life of a server administrator. Either they that the the normal for them is that everyone's chasing them down, or they're doing the same monotonous task over and over and over again. And in both of these cases, a little bit of automation goes a long way. Um, but it sometimes feels like the recommendation is to really get stuck into a whole lot of code. Um, and the examples that are out there that are the, the really big ones are huge mountains of code, are, are really large applications um, taking the four and uh, the, the biggest spots to see what is the art of the possible. Um, and there are definitely plenty of amazing people uh, with amazing pieces of work that have taken plenty of years um, and it's going to take even more to replicate them uh, when starting from scratch. Um, and so it's really difficult for the server admins who feel like their, their skills are going a little bit rusty. Um, they might even be feeling like they don't really remember the fundamentals from their undergrad years. Um, even a simple hello world might be a little bit fuzzy in their memory. Um, and and they, they feel like they, they need to get started from really, really basics. Um, but you can even do that. Uh, not everyone needs to be great at programming to get a start. Uh, the, the tools out there are rather simple, especially if you just look for automating the more simple tasks. Um, but even when they're going through, um, the, the documentation that's out there can be a little bit confusing at times and, and feeling like it's a bit overwhelming. Um, so I'm going to do two little run throughs, uh, two examples in a step by step format. Um, the first one of which is what happens when someone leaves your company? Uh, they normally have content on the server, but you can't delete them out. 
uh, straight away without moving that content somewhere to, to someone else or removing it completely. So this sort of process is normally rather laborious to try to work out, firstly, who has left the company, um, if you are not using something like Active Directory. Um, if you're using the, the local authentication, this becomes quite the challenge and can actually take up a lot of time of a server admin uh, who's running in a small company. So I went about and uh, put together this 40 lines, including uh, the, the little gaps to make it a little bit easier to read. Um, and this does just that. It goes through all the content. Um, it works out who, uh, they, for a list of people, um, what content they own, transfers it to a single person, in this case, an, an admin user, and finally then removes that person from uh, the site. Uh, you'd still need to remove them manually for the, the server overall. Um, so let's go through. The top section here uh, uses a library that Tableau provides called the Tableau Server Client. Um, it's a pip install, uh, so it's nice and easy to get there. Uh, we have two different settings, a list of all the usernames that you might want to use. Uh, this is just a list of one, but that can be extrapolated out. And then there's uh, the admin username that we want. And we're using usernames rather than IDs to make it a little bit easier um, to try to get on top of. Um, it, it's a lot easier to get a username than to dig through and find the ID. Uh, and then the last bits are for our authentication into the Tableau server. And this is just boilerplate. You can find this in the REST API documentation or the uh, Tableau server client documentation, even easier. Um, simple copy and paste, that's how I got these. Uh, the next step is to uh, go through and create a filter for just the admin user. So it takes a couple of lines here, but if you look up the filters, uh, it's a nice, easy step through process. Uh, you can even see that we're uh, creating a new request option, um, and then we're creating that as a filter. We're adding a filter. Um, the filter that we're using is the request option field name. So we're using name, we're filtering upon name, where it's equal to uh, the value that we're, we're bringing in. And so um, the, the change to username references the one up here of admin username. So we're trying to create a filter of where the name is the username of the admin. Uh, the next step is to actually go and search all of the users to get um, applying this filter. We should just get one back. If we don't, then we're running into issues. I probably should put some error handling in here, but let's wait until we run into problems rather than needing to handle that uh, all from day one. Um, once we know that we get one result, we got it right, then we can uh, set the change to user ID as this uses the, the first one in the list uh, ID. Nice and simple. We, we now have the ID rather than needing to look that up manually. Um, Tableau can give us that just using the API. Next up is to iterate over the list of users that we have, because normally when one person leaves, you might have half a dozen uh, that you're wanting to go back and clean up. Uh, we, we don't all normally keep right on top of uh, when a single person leaves. So going through a list at a time and, and cleaning it up is a nice, easy way of doing it. Then we apply another uh, filter, just like the one before, but this time searching for the user that has left. And that's why we're using username now. Um, we are also doing the same check to make sure that there is only one of them. And then we go on and we create another filter. This time, based on that name of the person, uh, we want to get uh, using the owner field. This is a filter that we're going to put on all objects, whether they be workbooks or data sources. So we're creating it based on the owner name to match up the name of the user that uh, is leaving our system. We then apply this to get all of the workbooks on the server that meet this filter. Uh, we can iterate through the list of workbooks 
uh, and get for each individual workbook, we want to uh, change the owner ID. So the workbook.owner ID is the uh, parameter that we're wanting to update to be the ID of the admin user that we have. And then we're applying this. We're uh, using server workbooks update this particular workbook with the changed value that we have. We do the same for the data sources. And in both these cases, it's going to iterate through all of the content that that old person had and give it to the admin user. So then finally, we can delete them. We can uh, get from the users list, remove them based on their ID that they have. And then that is it, nice and simple. Uh, a step through of the 40 lines of code to be able to go and actually clean up all that content uh, of the person that's leaving. It seems easy when I'm doing it like this. There was a lot of looking up of documentation and trial and error. Uh, but when I know the usernames of people, I'm able to do, uh, I'm able to test it out in a simple testing site um, before running this uh, on a wider server. Um, so we've got a first basic script down. It helps us do our jobs that little bit better. But uh, in companies that I work for, we've changed databases. Um, and so this is, more problematic because not everyone moves at the same speed, but we need to move the whole company forward. And so what happens when people are a, a little bit slow in migrating their uh, databases uh, that they're using for their Tableau content, whether that be workbooks or data sources? Uh, how can we find out who they are, which pieces of content that they're owning and uh, get them to go through and update it or send out a small team of individuals from the the DBAs or from our center of excellence to go out and help them not be so sloth-like, help them to actually go and know which pieces of content that they need to uh, update and republish. Well, this one's even easier. Uh, I was able to do it in this case, 26 lines, including the gaps for readability. Uh, and you'll see a lot of similarities in the way that I approached this problem to the one that I did before. Every time that I solve one of these problems, it makes it that little bit easier for moving ahead and uh, doing bigger and better things. So we start off the same way. We start off with importing our library. We have all of our logins. And this time I want to put together an email list and uh, even some of the content that they have. So I'm using a list operator in Python. Next, we're going through and we're paging over all of the data sources. This time I'm using the pager function uh, simply because the number of data sources on a server can start running into issues. Um, same with workbooks. Uh, I'm sure that we'll see a couple of things later on from the likes of Mark Wu, uh, where he has significantly more content and you don't want to approach these limits and miss out on a little bit of content. It might only be one or two, but I bet you that if there's one or two that fall onto the second page of content, then they're likely to be the ones that you forget about and someone will run into an issue and you'll be paged during the middle of the night. So using the pager helps us just have the safety of knowing that we're going to get through everything. Next up is going through from, uh, for each of the data sources, we wanna be, uh, actually populating the connection information. This isn't put in the data source object uh, straight away. So we have to use this uh, one extra command to get the, to populate all that connection information. And then we're going to iterate through the connections that it has. Then we start applying a filter. Uh, based on the connection information, we can get things like the connection type to know whether it's a Postgres database and the server address. So in this case, uh, it should be one that server admins feel a little bit more familiar with, uh, applying uh, a filter to our Postgres database and trying to work out who's actually using it. Um, yeah, you might wanna update it so that they're not using the local host IP address and to move on to something else. Uh, 
uh, or it might be in this case that uh, we're upgrading to a multi-node cluster um, and not every one of our nodes actually has the Postgres database installed on it. So this is actually going to fall over some of the time. So once we have that filter applied, we can start uh, going in and trying to find out um, who owns that content. So we know that this is a data source with a connection that is of interest to us. So we want to go through all the users on the server and get it based on ID. There's a couple of these functions that are extra ones, so we don't need to do that complex filter that we did before. We can just apply a function. And in this case, we can apply the function of get by ID for the data source owner ID. Makes it a lot simpler, and I was very happy to find this one. Um, once we have the users and we have which data source it is, we can just append this to our email list. So uh, I'm capturing the full name of the person, the email of the owner, uh, that it's a data source. Um, I'm sorry for the pop-ups that are happening. Um, the name of the data source, the ID, which project that it's living in, the project ID. Uh, these IDs help us it help give us a couple of references in case we want to go into the Postgres database and look it up or want to use other uh, REST API calls in the future. Uh, because we're iterating over all of the data sources, this is going to just append one at a time to that email list. Next up is then doing the same, the exact same thing for the workbooks. Uh, when you're doing something like this, uh, I tend to copy and paste the big code block and then uh, forget to update uh, everything to say workbook instead of data source. So watch yourself on that one. Um, either I forget to uh, do the right server call or I start using workbook like this in um, my iteration and then I forget in one place and it then starts trying to look up a workbook ID in data sources or a data source, the, the last data source ID that I use in workbooks and it'll throw you an error. Um, it's extremely common. But as for the rest of the code, it all works exactly the same. So that's a nice, simple one. Um, yeah, everywhere that I've been before, we've had massive large-scale database migrations, uh, and they're always a bit of a pain. There is always someone that's lagging a little bit behind. So being able to have a script like this that, that goes through and uh, works really well um, is extremely important. Uh, and I'm sure a number of people are thinking, well, I can do this just with uh, some SQL in the Postgres database. But the real benefit for me on creating a script like this is that I can then use something like um, send out emails at the end of this script, uh, create templates using the likes of Jinja, and they can go out automatically. Uh, I can put that on a timer um, that it's scheduled every day, uh, CC my team in it so that they know who is getting all of these, and we can start to monitor if people are actually working forward. We can include extra content on um, how to, what the project plan looks like, um, how well everyone else is doing, just to help incentivize people to do that migration work, uh, which starts to become a little bit laborious if you're trying to do that um, after running a SQL command. You can end up getting a thousand people that you need to start sending emails to. Um, by automating this list, we can send out those emails automatically at the end of the script. Uh, because we have that list object. Um, yeah. So uh, overall, it's a matter of trying to focus on tasks which are convoluted in your day job and build up that programming muscle. As you saw, I was able to go through, understand the documentation that little bit more, find out more functions, even copy a lot of content that I already had, um, and then even look at ways of extending it out further once I had something solid and working. Um, I was able to look at ways that I could send out emails at the end or put it on a schedule, uh, something that means that I need to get involved less and less. By 
automating those tasks that you're doing or should be doing, uh, you'll be able to make the time for those bigger scripts and even applications while still getting your normal work done. Uh, all those things that you see people uh, having a big fanfare around that you would love to do one day and you don't know how they did it, well, they started off somewhere. Um, you need to as well. And then even though those uh, hand tools that you're using uh, really um, slow and sometimes feel frustrating because you're not able to do the big work, they'll start teaching you where you need to drill that hole or make the right cut. Uh, but soon you'll get better and better at doing it uh, before needing to invest in the big guns. And I have a few different resources that I use today, uh, just in case you're interested. So, thank you. Thank you. Now, I'll pass it back to you, Gigi. That's a great presentation. I hope some of you got inspired to get started with the, our APIs. I can also add, when you are part of a developer site, you get a free developer sand, uh, sandbox site. So it's a great place as well if you want to get started using our APIs and you don't want to mess up with your production environment or just being an admin on your site. So you can try like user creation, delete project. You can get your free sandbox site to try them. So now let's go to Jonathan that is in London. Jonathan is known as the server guy and is also the winner of the London Hack Hackathon last year. Jonathan, the stage is all yours. Thanks. Um, just trying to share my screen here. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to take a slightly different tack and, and just uh, try to think of as many use cases for server admins using the developer tools um, as possible. Um, I hope everybody can see my slide deck. Um, so let's jump in. A uh, little bit about me. I am a solutions architect at the Information Lab. been using Tableau for nearly 10 years now. Um, kind of accidentally became server a tableau server consultant um used to be a, a tableau desktop guy um and then sort of started getting deeper and deeper into tableau server uh, and currently um enjoying working from home a lot more often these days um so why, why do we want to use these apis and, and developer tools i think mainly because we want to automate stuff right um, so I just try to think of as many uh, different reasons or different use cases as, as I could. Um, and, and I kind of had a chat to some colleagues and, and some Tableau server admins in the community. And these seem to be sort of the most popular use cases for using some of the API tools um, as, a, as a server administrator. Um, by, by far, the, the one that came up the most um, was using the REST API to scan for content that's either dormant or stale or taking up a lot of room on, on, a, on a Tableau server. Um, disk space is always, um, you know, needs to be carefully managed. So you could uh, use that API to clean up any content uh, which is older than a certain number of days or, or hasn't been viewed or, or is um, excessively large. Um, um, and what you can do there is you can also have a look at maybe re removing some of the earlier revisions if you uh, if you have revision history enabled on your server. I think the default is to keep up to 25 previous versions um, of a piece of content. Um, I typically recommend reducing that anyway, but you could you know you can go back and sort of uh, just uh, remove any of the the really early revisions to free up some disk space. Um, another one using the REST API is around managing data quality. So one of the uh, a fairly recent feature was um, the ability to add data quality warnings um, to, to pieces of content. Um, you can actually use the API now to, um, to add these data quality warnings to your content. Um, you might set up an automatic process to, um, to add this warning to data sources that are known to be questionable, so maybe a dev database, for example. 
Permissions governance, this is another really popular one that came up a few times. Just making sure that um, in your production environment, you might have a, um, uh, you know, very sensitive information. You want to make absolutely sure that um, the permissions that you've set on the project or the workbook or the data source um, are, are present and correct. So um, uh, you, you will have on a large enterprise server, you might have several super users, several admins. Um, maybe someone makes a little mistake, which results in a, a permission changing. Um, you can automate a process that scans your, your content and make sure that um, um, all of that content uh, complies to uh, a baseline permission set um, that you can compare those permissions to. Another one using the REST API, um, this fairly new uh, addition to the REST API is, uh, is having a look at recommendations um, for views. So um, Tableau Server now does some fancy uh, machine learning um, to recommend certain dashboards to users. Um, you can actually um, grab uh, a list of those recommendations um, using the API and you could build that into a, you know sort of a custom landing page if you needed to. There's a couple of other calls which could be handy here as um, get recently viewed content and get a list of favorites for a given user. Um, so you could you could have a um, um, a process which which grabs all of that information and and serves it up in a great landing page, a custom landing page for each individual when they've come to visit your server. Um, this is a this is a pretty cool one. So um, a chap called Alex Ross, who works for Tableau in the London office, he built something called Tab Compare. Um, you can find out more about it on his blog, uh, tableaujunkie.com, I believe. Um, but really, what this does is it uses a I think it's a Python library um, that compares images. So um, uh, considering consider that when you come to do an upgrade, you um, you just want to make sure that all of your dashboards uh, and the dashboard formatting and the layout won't change. Uh, we, we want those to look exactly the same uh, pre uh, post upgrade as it did before before the upgrade. Um, now this is a is a Python script that will go and um, fetch images of all of your dashboards. So it fetches thumbnails um, from from a given server and compares them with the same thumbnails from from another server. Um, so you could upgrade um, uh, your test environment um, first, and then you know run run the script to compare the the images to make sure that all of the dashboards look exactly the same. Um, I quite like that project. It's a fun one. Um, this is a fairly new um, addition as well. It's called the Data Acceleration Client. Um, I think this is in beta. Um, but I did find some some pretty good documentation on it that's out there. Um, but you, this is again a script that uses the REST API um, to accelerate workbooks. So it basically runs a process that hits your Tableau Server backgrounder to pre-compute the data in in a workbook. Uh, so that data is already loaded into cache uh, and ready to go. So if you do have that sort of uh, that CEO level dashboard that needs to be super fast um, all day every day, then you can you, know, you can use this tool to um, uh, to automate automate that process. Um, webhooks. So this is a pretty cool one. Um, we we all have extract refreshes that fail from time to time, and you know the Tableau server is pretty good to about notifying you. By email and by the little notifications icon in the in the UI, um, when those extract refreshes fail, um, but you can also um, uh, plug into the webhooks uh, functionality to uh, to send a, an event to perhaps something that's uh, that's triggering that extract refresh job. Um, so in the case of an extract refresh failing. As a server admin, uh, you know, I think it would be pretty cool if I could get a list every day of all the all the refreshes that are failing, um, why they failed, who owns them, and then maybe the webhook uh, functionality could um, automatically um, try and re-trigger um, an ETL workflow to, to that that would 
go ahead and um, and retry that 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 extract refresh job. Um, another one that's useful for um, for server admins and, and maybe the data admins, I guess, um, is just making sure that. You know, in uh, an example I've given here, um, and I've and I've had a, a few enterprise um, community folks talk about the need to ensure that you know um, in my in in their production environment, only uh, connections to their production databases are being used, or similarly in in the test environment, um, only test databases are in use. Um, so really, we can use the, the metadata API to um, to scrape that information and and validate it. So the metadata API um, is built into um, Tableau Server. I think it came out in 2019.3 or 4, and you can query information about your your data sources, including the database servers as well. Uh, that um, that the data sources are are connecting to, um, and that way you can validate, you know, um, that these data sources are, are published and 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 correct in in the appropriate environment. Auditing row level security. This is another sort of governance piece um, that you can use the metadata API for um, to just make sure that if you do have extremely sensitive data sets, which uh, where, where you have to ensure that user filters or row level security is being applied at all times. Um, you can automate a process again using this API to make sure that those user filters are applied at the data source level. This is a little shout out to another project um, by uh, another Tableau employee in the London office, Tom Christian. I uh, built a, a tool called Lumbersnake. Um, but um, what's cool about this is it uses the Hyper API. Um, you point it at your Tableau Server Logs folder, um, and it goes and grabs certain lines out of your VizQL Server Logs, and, and using the Hyper API creates an extract file um, that then you um, you point this workbook at, and it tells you all kinds of very detailed, granular information about um, your Viz loading times. Um, uh, as you can see on this dashboard. Um, there's a huge amount of detail on each individual query that each workbook is is generating on load, um, and it really helps you to kind of drill down to see which dashboards are um, perhaps consuming a lot of the resource cycles on your on your server, and um, allows you to kind of maybe go and troubleshoot those. Okay, so we're on to the last. Three. Um, these three are using the TSM API, which, um, as far as I could tell, is still in alpha. Um, although maybe the folks at Tableau can can enlighten us, but um, there is documentation out there on it. Um, what I like about this is, you know, the ability to remote control your server, basically. So um, you can do things like hot topology changes using this API um, that allows you to sort of maybe add or remove backgrounders. Um, uh, or swapping out backgrounders for physical processes depending on the time of day. Uh, and you can do all of that without any downtime, and you can do it by you know, calling this API remotely. Um, similarly, you can use it to do things like remote housekeeping. Uh, maybe if you're running uh, three server environments, or, or maybe even more than that, um, you might want to centralize your housekeeping into a script um, that you want to run remotely um, that can do things like generating a backup file um, or running the cleanup job on a server or archiving log files and so on. Um, so that can all be done by hitting this API remotely. No local scripts needed. <clears throat> and then the last one, I actually really like this as well. Um, I get this question a lot. How do I um, how do I keep an eye on my licenses, my Tableau server licenses? Um, for example, uh, when do they expire? When is the maintenance uh, running to? Um, and uh, how many licenses do I have available from my quota, for example? And you can use this um, TSM API to query information about your license keys on your server as well. And that is that is me. Um, that's everything. Um, that's a quick little stop tour through a bunch of um, 
a bunch of different uh, popular use cases. Um, and I'll hand back to Gigi. Thank you, Jonathan, for the good presentation. A lot of different use cases. Just a quick reminder, we are going to send the recording and the slides after the presentation. So if you miss something, don't worry. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A box on WebEx. Now, Mark Wu, your stage is yours. Hello, everyone. This is Mark Wu. I'm a server admin in a very large uh, enterprise environment. Gigi, can you share my slides? Yes. Today, I'm going to share with you a few major use cases, how Tableau API is used in our server environment. We'll try to share major use cases in one slide. Start with the left corner, where is the user group sync from LDAP or your Active Directory for Tableau Server. We use local authentication which means that all the users in the groups will be synced to Tableau Server, and we do those sync every half hour. There are a lot of different kinds of APIs, mainly around user group method, where you create the new users, uh, create the user in the side, add users to the group, then remove users from the group, change user side rule, and so on. At the beginning, Mark, he mentioned about um, when person left the team, he has a, has a process how to handle the person, change the user to admin. Uh, we also have a very similar, uh, we don't change the user's um, content to owner to the admin, but we use the REST API to change the user's side rule as unlicensed. When the user left team, they only ask the project leaders to change the ownership. And licensed users are okay to be the content owners, although the user themselves they cannot log into Tableau Server anymore. So that's a one major use case we've been using a lot, tens every single day, every single hour. On the right side, the governance process as a server admin, especially when the server is getting larger and larger. One of the main challenges is abstracts and the content. The problem is that the self-service publishers, they're pretty much never bother to delay the old content. They only push new ones to the server. So it's up to server admin us how to identify those not use the content workbook data, data sources, and then find a way to delete them from the server. Not only that, and also there are workbooks not being used anymore. However, the extracts refresh still going on daily, even hourly. That is a big problem for server scalability. So we find a way that to identify those not used content, any workbooks, now being used for 90 days, we will delete them. The deletion piece, of course, is using the REST API to find the workbooks and the delete workbooks from the server. And also, uh, we have scripts to schedule them, to reschedule the abstracts automatically based on the usage. For example, if a workbook only used for three times in last few weeks, and this workbook has hourly refresh schedule, we will say, hey, this is unnecessary. Daily refresh should be good enough because you only use it two, three times a week. So we have a scripts that will reschedule these extracts from hourly to daily. Daily can become weekly, weekly, weekly can become monthly then we can stop the schedule if the content they've been used for two months and three months we delete them all about the rest api we cannot live without the rest api the rest api helps us to govern the server move down to the right corner 
You notice that I have another Tableau server cluster set up. Um, that's a special when we set up. We don't want the publishers to publish directly to that special cluster. Uh, server team controls this. Uh, this is not a very common use case, uh, but for special cases where um, it's a very special controlled environment. How do we handle that? Well, um, we still want to automate the process. We want the users to publish to the main cluster in the center. Then we use the REST API to identify the new workbooks, new data sources, download them, and then publish to the cluster on the right lower corner. We control the scripts. You can say, yeah, there is a, today there is a Tableau migration tool. Yes, uh, there is migration tool, but the migration tool is good, but it's not really good enough yet. It does not handle the password yet. For example, if I have embedded a password with the data source, then that migration tool will not be able to handle it automatically. Uh, we have our own custom scripts that will be able to handle automatically more like move the workbook or migrate the workbook from one server cluster to another cluster with the password everything included. Move on to the email piece, workbook and the view API. Tableau has the subscriptions, which is good. Okay. Uh, users get a subscribe, get the emails either for view or workbooks, they're subscribed. Sometimes um, some users, some publishers, they want to send a special email to either partners or executives with attached PowerPoint. And uh, in a nicer way, also the email body has the latest numbers from Tableau server. And they want to automate the process. First of all, um, this is not a very common use case, okay? Uh, because we do encourage server users to come to the server, interact with Tableau server. But there are some special use cases where um, for those audits, if they prefer to receive emails instead, and they don't want the standard subscription. So that's where the REST API come, comes to play. Again, it's, a, it's more like a corner case. It's not a very common use case. The REST API will download the workbook image and using the JavaScript API to get the specific value from the view and then using the Python scripts to put together in the email body and also attach the download PowerPoint to the emails. And then it can automate the whole email sending out. Uh, this is not for survey admin per se. This is uh, um, what the regular publishers are able to do. Again, on the um, left corner, extracts API. This is where uh, not for survey admins. The right, most of our extracts are, are scheduled automatically on Tableau server. We have a lot of extracts every day. But there are some cases where um, Refresh on the server is not good enough, either because uh, the two hours time limit or uh, because they want to have the data pipeline to be really um, fresh data, freshness of the data. So they kick off the extracts outside Tableau by using the Tableau extracts API to push the hyper to Tableau server. There are quite some user cases, um, although I would say in our server environment, probably maybe somewhere about 10, 15% of those extracts are handled through the REST extracts API outside Tableau. So this gives you the overview of how REST API is actually used in our very large environment. CJ, if you go to the next slide. I give a recap. 
in our environment, we basically cannot live without API. Cannot. Because API really helps us to scale the server to a large environment. Help us to enable more self-service. So server admins can really focus on the server platform performance kind of things. And we let publishers to handle as many things as they can by themselves. So if you're asking me what I like most about REST API, oh, first of all, it follows the UI permission. That's one thing I like. There are a lot of other systems uh, other than Tableau. They're, they have API, but the API permission is no good. Tableau is awesome since day one. The permission piece I like. Now the second, my favorite feature of a REST API, which is relatively new, I believe it's only available since version 19.4. That is personal access token. That is huge. At the beginning, um, when Mark Key has his presentation in his scripts, he using the username password. That is what everyone has been using for a long time. Now you don't have to. Now you don't have to have your password in your code. You can use personal access tokens. That is awesome. Not only that, and the personal access tokens can be reset by the publishers by themselves. You don't have to come to serve enemy. In the past, if you have local authentication, in order for publishers to use REST API, they have to come to server admins who will have to create a password for them. That's kind of a silly task. Now you don't have to. With 19.4 version, this can become self-service. Everyone actually can reset, can create their personal access token to be used in the REST API. One last slide. Well, um, this is more like a for a Tableau dev team, especially for API team. My wish list. I always take my opportunity to ask Tableau give us more, more, more. If you, if I can ask one one thing, I, I was saying sometimes the REST API is too slow. For example, to sync users, that REST API is way too slow, especially creating new users, more specifically. It takes about a day if I need to add 20,000 new users on my server. It's way too slow. If I will need to add 200,000 users, it takes too long. And also, considering that I have a syncing job every half hour, add a bunch of new users, that is that is not practical. I have too many new users. I wish this can be done much, much, much faster. That's my number one pain point. Of course, yeah, I don't need to add this so many new users very often, but if when I need it, I really need it. But uh, right now we have to handle it in the weekends. It takes a few weekends to handle it in a batch. Otherwise, it impacts production, the syncing job, and so on. Well, number two, so I always, I need a lot more APIs. I always need to feel others, like extracts job priority change. I don't see API. Uh, like update project owners, I thought uh, maybe my mistake. Um, the update project owners, I think is available right now. That's my mistake on the slide deck. Um, I think it is there already. So it's mainly my ask to dev team will be make user addition faster. And one small ask will be the job priority, extra job priority change. That's all I have. Thank you, Mark. 
So just if you have any feedback that you want to pass along to the dev team, we are always happy to listen to you and about what you want to see on the roadmap and why you want to see it. So feel free to email us, tweet us if you have any feedback on the developer platform. Thank you. So now we have 10 minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, use the Q&A box. I think, Mark, maybe you want to also mention, I know that you are running the Tableau server admin user group. Do you, you have any recommendation for people that want to join the, your Tableau server user group for the next presentation? Yeah, um, thank you, G. Um, we do have a Tableau admin user group, um, which had a Recently, we had a one, another one scheduled, I believe, is the 1st of April, I believe. Um, yeah, I think Tableau marketing team will be sending out the calendar invitation. It'll be okay. next week, it should be sent out. Perfect. So stay tuned if you want to join Mark Wu and other presenter of a Tableau server admin for awesome presentations on the 1st of April. I think so. Thank you. So let's see what's if you have any questions. So, so can you maybe share Mark with the details to sign up for the Tableau server admin group? Some people are asking the link. Yeah, if you how do I do the link? How do I share? I don't know how do I share? And uh, if you can just post it on the chat. Okay. Perfect. So if you're interested, the link is going to be on the chat. So example for automation are going to be shared. We are going to share the slides, the links, and the recording of this session. So if you missed anything, don't worry. Um, and questions, um, oh, let's move. Any way to send webhooks notification on Slack for all relevant events and how we can customize the messages and notifications? Yes, we have a project available. So um, if you go to GitHub, uh, Tableau GitHub, and you look for data dev um, mini, pro mini project, uh, I think it's a project, you can find a lot of tutorials, and one of them is how to set up webhooks on Slack. I'm going to put the link in the, in the chat as well. And without using any external services like Zapier or Ift, don't worry. So, um, the details, any questions, is the time in the Q&A box. If you want to ask questions to Mark Wu, Mark K, or Jonathan, that's the time. So the question, is there a way to create a fresh data source connection using this API, or is it limited to data source that already published on Tableau server? So I don't know if one of you want to take these questions, or I can take it. I didn't quite follow this question, sorry. Let me find it again, because I think, where is it? Um, Is there a way to create a fresh data source connection using this API? I think he's mentioning the REST API, or is it limited to the data sources that are already published on the Tableau server? Sorry, I don't know. So the, uh, yes, it's fine, don't worry. The REST API could help you publish and manage data sources. And so if you go on the help page of the REST API, you can find you find all the documentation to solve your challenge. Any way to re-trigger any failed extract refresh depending upon the failure reason? It's on failure reason, and then what is? 
to re-trigger any failed extract refresh depending on the failure reason. I didn't quite follow. No, the failure reason. Uh, if you want to trigger, re-trigger uh, any failure, a uh, fail extract refresh. I'm not sure I follow your question. So if you ask a question, can you just clarify? Clarify. Mm -hmm. So if I miss your questions and your question hasn't been answered, can you put it back in the Q&A box? Yeah. Um, so, okay. Okay, I think we have, um, we answer all the questions. Oh. Um, Um, I got there. There is a question in the chat. Uh, Jebus, I believe adding twenty thousand users at one time is real. It's not common use for many organizations. I agree. Uh, it's not. Um, but when you have multiple sites, when you have multiple um, environment, uh, it happens. Uh, actually, it took us a few weeks to add hundred thousand users. I say weeks. Yes, just because the way it is. Thank you for clarification. Uh, uh, can I demo on the email case I mentioned? Download the image, email Python. Um, that is done actually by a publisher in the company. Uh, it's not by me. Uh, it's done by self service environment. Download image, there is REST API. I um, think the code, the kind of the framework of the code could be available somewhere. Um, is yes. Half, yeah, I think there is one. That's a pretty much, yeah. So, um, I mean, I think I see the question. So we are going to follow up as well. We can send you the link to the script by email as well. We will follow up on your questions. I think that's it. Do you see any other questions, Mark or Jonathan? There is a question around uh, based on the, uh, the web hoax. Yeah, I'm going through my opinion. This is a mark about the web hoax. That's a great feature. However, um, I wish the web hoax can be available for regular publishers as well. Not today is only available for admins. Yes, correct. Admin. That is not good enough for me. Okay, so that's good feedback. So. Um, if you think the same, you can just email us and yes, right now we made the decision for the first release to only Tableau Server admin that check that are responsible for extract or workbook, uh, workbook on the server. But if you think that publishers should have access to be able to create webbooks, just email us and we will be happy to li hear, listen, hear from you. Yeah, JJ, think about it. Is that web hoax today that has a bunch of triggers based on ad tracks failures. Yes. I mean, ad tracks are owned by the publishers, not by server admins. I have uh, like more than 10,000 ad tracks running every day. I don't deal, I don't own, I don't want to own any of those. I want to give the ownership to publishers. So when That's their ad tracks failed, they have to take care. So they have to write the web hoax to get whatever things they need to, to do. That's a good point, and we will pass it along with uh, to the engineering team. Some of them are already on the call, so they are, they are listening as well to your feedback. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoy the sessions. The developer user group, thank you for to the, um, all the presenters. We are going to send the slide and the recording, and stay tuned for more events uh, on our um, by joining the developer program so sign in to receive all the invitations thank you a lot have a nice day have a nice evening happy st patrick's day thank you bye bye, -bye.